I'm so sorry to have to be the person to tell you this, but you're just not talented. I know this video is gonna ruffle some feathers, but here we go. Hello there everyone, Matt here with virtualinstructor.com and this video is going to be a little bit controversial and even saying that it's going to be a little bit controversial is probably an understatement. In fact, this video might make some of you mad and I'm ready for that and I accept that. But the point of this video is not to anger you. In fact, the point of this video is actually to free you. So I want you to hear the points that I'm going to make in this video, form your own opinion, of course, but at least hear me out. And if you take what I say to heart and put it into practice, practice, it may just change your life. Now, what am I talking about exactly? Well, I'm talking about talent and we're all familiar with what talent is, or we think we are. According to the Oxford Dictionary, talent means a natural aptitude or skill. Now, we've all met talented people in our lives and probably a lot of you have been labeled as talented at some point in your life for some skill that you've developed. I certainly have been. In fact, I've been called talented my whole life. I'm obviously an artist, but what many people don't know about me is I'm also a drummer. I've recorded a couple of albums with different bands. I'm also an athlete that participates in a variety of different sports. And people have seen the skills that I've developed over time and just attributed those skills to me being talented. When I was younger, I, I accepted the label as talented, but as I got older, that label of talent started to make me a little bit angry. And that was because I was putting in a lot of hard work to be talented. The folks that were calling me talented didn't see all the hard work that I put in, and they just assumed that it was some type of gift that I was born with. In fact, it seems like Michelangelo had a similar opinion. He's quoted as saying, if people knew how hard I worked to gain my mastery, it would not seem that wonderful at all. The truth is the label of talent can actually limit you. If you believe that your skill is due to talent that you were born with, then you're probably less likely to work hard to develop that talent. And when you're met with a setback, you're probably unsure of what to do next because you've been relying on this talent that you've been born with. On the flip side of things, if you weren't labeled as talented, then you're probably less likely to try that skill or develop it at all. And if you do try it, you'll probably only try it once or twice before you give up and try something else. Florida State University psychologist Anders Ericsson and science writer Robert Poole wrote a book called Peak, Secrets from the New Science of Expertise. They write, the belief that one's abilities are limited by one's genetically prescribed characteristics manifests itself in all sorts of I can't or I'm not statements. In fact, if you were identified as lacking talent in a specific area as a child, then you probably believed it and you probably still believe it today. So before we go too deep with talent, let's just identify some of the skills that people attribute to being talented. Of course, there's music, there's art, and of course, athletics as well. So it only makes sense to look at a few prodigies in music, art, and athletics and see if there's something deeper going on than just talent. We'll look at Mozart, Picasso, and Tiger Woods, the American golf legend. Now, it would seem that these three individuals have absolutely nothing in common with each other. But if we dive a little bit deeper and look at their upbringing, we can see one major similarity between all of these prodigies. Mozart, of course, was a legendary musician and composer. He was widely considered to be a prodigy in music, performing at a very young age for aristocrats. But if we dive a little bit deeper and look at Mozart's history and upbringing, we can see that his father, Johann Leopold Mozart, was a German composer, violinist, and theorist. He literally wrote a textbook on violin. Who better to teach and mold a young, talented Mozart? Now, let's look at Picasso. We all know Pablo Picasso as being the father of Cubism and one of the most influential visual artists of all time. Like Mozart, Picasso was considered to be a prodigy at a very young age. 
But let's look a little bit deeper. Picasso's father, Jose Blasco, was a drawing teacher at the Malaga School of Fine Arts and was curator of the city's municipal museum. Now, I'll ask you again, who better to teach and mold a young, talented Picasso than a drawing teacher? Now, let's look at Tiger Woods and his upbringing. Tiger Woods began his golfing career under the tutelage of his father, Earl, before he was two years old. His father was a single handicapped amateur golfer. And for those of you who don't know much about golf, that means he was a pretty darn good golfer. Who better to teach and mold a young, talented Tiger Woods? Now, in looking at these three examples, we can see that all three had a tutor that was very close to them. In this case, all three of them had a father who was not only skilled in their profession, but also was a teacher of some sort. Well, the only exception of the teacher part would be Earl, which is Tiger's father, but still, again, he started Tiger under the age of two playing golf. I can guarantee you that if I started playing golf when I was under two years old, I'd probably be a pretty good golfer at this point as well. So you can see here that there's more to it than just being born with a talent. There has to be some level of dedicated practice involved as well. Let's take a look at a common example, and maybe you can relate to this example. Let's say that there are two students in a kindergarten classroom. We'll call one student A and one student B. Let's say student A one day is drawing a bird and so is student B. The teacher walks around the classroom and notices that student A is doing a pretty good job of drawing an accurate bird. Maybe they're coloring inside of the lines. Well, the teacher notices what student A has done and brings that to student A's attention in the form of a compliment. The teacher might say, oh, student A, you're so wonderful at drawing. This is such a wonderful drawing. You're so good at that. But then the teacher might not say anything to student B at all. Well, for obvious reasons. Well, student A gets a feeling of pride and believes the truth that the teacher has told her. So student A goes home and shows her mother her drawing, and the mom is excited and, of course, puts it on the refrigerator and praises her child as well. Student B, of course, doesn't have the same experience and doesn't say anything to their parents, so there's no feedback, there's no reinforcement of what the teacher has said to student A. So the next day, student A is excited to draw another bird or maybe something else. In fact, they're so excited to get that reinforcement that they continue to draw on a daily basis and they continue to get that feedback. Over time, what student A is actually doing is practicing and improving their skill based on the reinforcement that they are getting from adults or other students or other people in their lives. While student B never got that reinforcement. So student B does not continue drawing and assumes that they don't have this skill or talent that student A mysteriously has. As a result, over many years, student A becomes a talented artist while student B becomes something else in life. I bet this story hits home for a lot of you because I've had similar experiences. I was told that I wasn't good at certain things and I was good at other things. So what did I do? I continued to do the things that I was good at and avoided the things that I wasn't so good at. But now I've learned as I'm a lot older that some of the things that people told me that I was bad at, I'm actually pretty good at. I just didn't realize it and I didn't put enough effort into those things at that particular time in my life. I've also noticed that some of the things that people told me I was good at, I was only good at it because I had practiced it a lot. And Anders Ericsson and Robert Poole also agreed with this as well. In their book, they write, thousands and thousands of hours of hard focused work is the key to gaining expertise. We attain skills through learning and practice. Now this is true of any skill, not just the ones that we attribute to talent. Now, when it comes to drawing and painting, someone has to show you how to do that particular skill or how to do a version of that skill. Then after that, it's up to you to practice and put in the hard work. The more practice that you put into it, the better that you get. So the truth is skills like drawing, painting, music, dance, and athletics are built slowly over time with hard work and practice. Now, this talent idea, of course, is a heated debate, and I don't mean to suggest that there aren't prodigies out there, but prodigies are the exception. They're not the norm. 
and talent can be gained by just about anyone. So the point of this video, of course, is not to anger you. The point of this video is to open up your mind and maybe even change your life. If you give the points that I've made in this video a little bit of a chance, then you may find that you're able to do things that you thought you couldn't. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, make sure that you give this video a like and make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And if you do want to hone those drawing and painting skills a bit more, you can do so over at thevirtualinstructor.com where we have a membership program that includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media, weekly live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to check out our membership program, there's a link below this video. You can go check it out. You can also check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free. Again, a link below this video as well. You can leave your comments below this video. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.